All right, welcome to the final stretch. This is going to be part four of our play as tutorial. And in this portion, we will talk about how to rig the model as well as export it and set up the play as mod. Before we get too far, if you click here, it'll expose a drop down where you can then click Blender file. Inside of here is where we will delete anything that we don't need as far as images go. So just anything that you do not recognize, just go ahead and delete it as we won't need that. Do the same for the materials. And don't forget to delete the high resolution textures from your files, that way they don't clog up our mod. Inside of our link template folders, we should be able to find a blend file for link. Open that up and copy the skeleton from the link template. Paste it in with our model. And we're going to adjust the size and position of our model so that it will match fairly closely to what Link's is. In order to make rigging a little bit easier, we're going to go ahead and move Link into whatever position we need him to be in to match our current model. Make sure you're in top view. Make sure you're in top view. And select either leg, hit R, and type 22.5. Do the same for the other leg, except for negative 22.5. Then for the arms, type 45 and negative 45. Once that's done, we are going to go to our model, and we're going to start creating vertex groups. This can be done by selecting an area of our model, then coming over here to the Vertex Group tab, and if you look down here, your model may or may not have a lot of Vertex Groups already in here. Let's go ahead and clear this out. You'll be able to find this chart in the description below. It is also pinned in Model Dev. Keep in mind, right and left are the characters right and left and not our right and left. One way you can do this is by selecting a portion of the model, for instance, both feet, assigning them both to the same vertex group, for instance, the right foot vertex group, and then deselecting the right foot, leaving only the left foot. Remove that from the right foot vertex group, and add it to the left foot vertex group. Continue doing this for the rest of the parts. Right here I actually make a mistake as every single vertex group will require at least one try to be in it. You will also want to make sure that you do have something for every single one of these vertex groups as if you don't, the game will go ahead and just put Link's regular vertex group in instead of having your custom one. This will be shown a little bit more later when we get the mod actually working as I did mess up the weight. Right here I'm just adding in a plane so that I can map the sheath to it. Since the sheath is actually considered equipment, this will actually get replaced with whatever the sheath is. I'm going to adjust some proportions to make it look a little closer to what Link's proportions are.
finally, once you're happy with your proportions, we can go ahead and select our model, then select our skeleton, make sure both are selected and the skeleton is yellow. Then we can go ahead and hit Control P, which will give you this, and click with empty groups. Now if we go into pose mode on our skeleton, we should be able to rotate each limb. However, yet again, I've made another mistake. And as it would turn out, all of my vertex groups were actually incorrectly named, and I actually needed a lowercase letter L instead of a capital. Now that I have that fixed, I can go ahead and try parenting it again, and I get this. Go ahead and hit Control Z, come over to our skeleton, select our skeleton, and in pose mode, come down to pose, and then apply, and then apply pose as rest pose. Once you've done this, we can go ahead and par parent our model to our skeleton, and everything should be working perfectly now. I'm actually going to move the inside of my arm to the torso vertex group because it just kind of looked awkward when it bent. But aside from that, all of my rigging is done. If you come over to this toolbar and go to OBJ EX, you'll see these two options over here. Go ahead and click both just to make sure that you don't have any unassigned vertices or multi-assigned vertices. If you have unassigned vertices, you need to assign those to a vertex group where they won't appear in our mod. And if you have multi-assigned vertices, you need to make sure that they are only assigned to one vertex group, otherwise it will cause issues in game as it's trying to figure out where those vertices should be. Now that we have that all fixed up, we're going to go and start folding our model. We're going to be wanting both of our arms to be pointing straight out on the x-axis. Our feet will need to point outwards, like such. and our hands will need to point upwards. Now if we find the waist bone, we're going to rotate that 180, so that it looks like such. Rotate the head by 90 degrees. The hat bone will be rotated by 135 degrees. And the sheath bone will be rotated by 180 degrees. Once we have everything folded correctly, we're going to go ahead and select our model, come into the modifiers tab, and hit apply. And then we'll select our skeleton again, go to pose, apply. Apply pose as rest pose, and then we can reparent our object to our skeleton. Unfolding is completely optional and not necessary, but if you want to, you can go ahead and unfold it so you can work on some more proportioning. Alright, we're almost ready to export. Last thing we need to do before exporting is name our model Rigged Mesh. Then we can go File, Export, Extended OBJ. Make sure we give it a name that we can remember, and then click Export OBJ. If you are doing any custom equipment, you can come over to the template file, where you will find the name that the custom equipment must be named as well as going into the vertex group to see which limb it needs to be assigned to. Your equipment doesn't actually have to be bound to the limb if you prefer to bind it to something else, like for instance some people have changed the hover boots to earrings or medallions. That is perfectly okay too, but I'm not going to cover any custom equipment on this mod just yet. Let me know if you guys want a tutorial in the future on that one. So we have our model exported. And if we come into our folder, we should find the OBJEX. Let's go ahead and open ZZ Play As and ZZ Convert. If 
for ZZ Convert, we are going to want all of these options selected. And then we simply hit OBJ EX to ZOBJ. We're going to navigate over to our OBJ EX and click on that. And for our name, make sure that we have the word convert somewhere within there, just so that we know that this is the converted ZOBJ rather than the play as ZOBJ. If nothing happens, much like what you see here, then something has gone wrong and one of our file sizes are too big. The first thing we're going to want to check is our texture files to make sure that we didn't accidentally make anything too large. And as it would turn out, I actually made a couple textures that were 64 by 64, which as I said earlier, does not usually work. Even though you could technically make it work, but this is a fairly easy fix. Just adjust the texture sizes and if needed, go into Blender and readjust those portions. Once that's fixed, let's go ahead and try it again. And if this pops up, then we are in business and we are good to go to ZZ Play As. In ZZ Play As, you have two sides, Child Link and Adult Link. I'm doing an Adult Link mod, so I'm going to go over to the manifest on Adult Link and make that the adult underscore link dot txt. For the bank ZOBJ, you're going to go into the template files and find the link optimized ZOBJ. And for the play as ZOBJ, this is going to be the one that we titled convert. Make sure you check import on whichever mod you are doing. Before we do anything else, we're going to need to copy our convert ZOBJ. And we will rename this one as play as to differentiate them. Now if we go down to destination, we're going to navigate to the folder with the ZOBJ in it. Click down here to get a little drop down and click on ZOBJ. Click on this ZOBJ. It will be overwritten, so make sure you're using the right ZOBJ. And if you get this, then everything works perfectly, and we're ready to go ahead and start with the SDK. So I'm going to go ahead and use PowerShell. You could use Command Prompt, but I prefer to use PowerShell. Let's copy our address for this folder, and type into the PowerShell CD space, and then paste in our address. If you have any special characters in any of your folder names, you may have to put quotations around your address, just that it will read it. After that, we're going to type model loader 64-n. This will set up our folder for the mod. After that, we will type model loader 64-i, and then we will paste in this website. And we can paste in this command. Once that's done, we can go over to our folder where we shall now see that it is populated. We're going to go into source. The pack's name will be determined by what this folder is named. So you can go and name it whatever your character's name is. Let's make sure that our play as the OBJ is copied. And then let's paste it into our pack's folder. Copy the entire name of our ZOBJ and then open package.json on just a notepad. This is the name that will show up on the mod loader screen. Down here we can go and paste in our ZOBJ file name. Save the file and close it. 
then we can come back over to our PowerShell, type modulator64-bd. And then if we come to our mod folder, we will now see a folder labeled dist, and inside will be our pack. Copy that into our mod loader mods folder. And now we can fire up mod loader 64 to give it a test. Make sure you have it and operator time online enabled. And go ahead and start a game. Now, if you remember from earlier, I told you that I did mess something up. What happened here is that I didn't actually assign any tries to the waist. So the game now has a hole for her waist and it doesn't know what to do. So it just loads in Link's waist and just messes up the entire model. Let's come back into Blender and adjust to make sure that we have tries around the waist. Export your new OBJ EX, then convert it to a ZOBJ, and run ZZ Play as again. Then type mod letter 64 BD again into the PowerShell, and your new mod will be created. Once again, paste this into our mods folder. And if everything went well, you should be greeted by your character in Ocarina of Time Online. Of course, from here, you can continue polishing your model to make it look perfect. But the goal of this tutorial was not to show you a perfect model, but to show you a working model, and I believe that's what we have here. If you have any other questions, be sure to post them in the model dev channel. But aside from that, that should be everything, and I hope you guys have good luck with making your own mods.